right, today we're covering 4-6, Triangle Congruence, CPCTC, and our learning target is I can use CPCTC to prove parts of triangles are congruent. You're probably wondering what CPTCC, CPCTC stands for. Well, nice thing is, it is corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. And so this is what we're going to use after we prove our two triangles are congruent, then we can use CPCTC to prove the parts are congruent. All right, so our example here, we have a picture, a diagram with the ravine, and it wants to know what the measure of AB is, which is this. So we're going to show that these two triangles are congruent. And then we're going to use CPCTC to, to find the length of AB. Okay, so what I've shown here is if we look at the two triangles, these angles are congruent because they're vertical angles. And then we have a side that's 10 and a side over here that's 10. And then we also have a fifth side of 15 and a side of 15 that are congruent. So if we look at these triangles, side, angle, side, they're congruent by side angle side theorem. And because of that, we know that the length of AB has to be the length of this side over here, which means AB has to be 18. And that's, we use CP, corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. Remember, you have to use one of the tri triangle congruence theorems first before you can use CPCTC. So if you haven't used one of these, you cannot use CPCTC. Just remember that. Okay. Now it's your turn for a check it out. You've got um, a landscape architect sets up a, tri a triangle and he wants to find the length across. It's like a little pond there. Good luck. All right, we're going to go through a proof. We want to, given that YW bisects xz, so it bisects this side, and xy is congruent to yz. We want to prove that angle xyw, so xyw is congruent to zyw. We want to show that those are congruent. So I will write the proof and we'll go over it. All right, so here's the proof. We're told that yw bisects that side. That's given. And because of that, these two segments have to be congruent. So XW has to be congruent to ZW by definition of bisector. We're also given that XY is congruent to YZ. And then YW is congruent to YW, reflects the property of congruence. Hopefully we know that by now. And now we've shown that all three sides are congruent. I forgot to put my marks up here. And so the triangles are congruent by side, side, side. And once we know that, we know corresponding parts of congruent congruent triangles are congruent, so angle XYW has to be congruent to angle ZYW because those are corresponding angles. And now it's your turn. So again, remember to mark up your diagram with what you're given. Show all this in your diagram here and then prove that segment PQ is congruent to segment PS. First, prove those two triangles are congruent and then prove their corresponding parts. All right, this is another proof. It's a little bit more complicated. Um, it does have parallel lines in here. So we're told that NO is parallel to MP and angle N is congruent to angle P. And we want to show that these two lines, MN is parallel to OP. So we want to show that these two lines are parallel. So we're going to show the triangles are congruent. And then by using the angles, we're going to be able to use a converse theorem to show that those lines are parallel. So this is what we're given. Because of that, NMO or NOM, this angle is congruent to this. Remember, that's, those are alternate interior angles. We know MO is congruent to MO. That's this line. That's reflexive. And now we have two angles and a side that are congruent in the two triangles, so those triangles are congruent by angle, angle, side. Because of that, NMO, which is this angle, is congruent to POM, which is this angle. 
Notice these are alternate interior angles to these two lines, and by the converse of alternate interior angles theorem, we know that MN is parallel to OP. And here's your check it out. Given J's midpoint of segment KM and NL, prove that K segment KL is parallel to segment MN. Again, prove triangles are congruent first, and we're going to be using a converse again in order to talk about parallel lines in there. All right, we're actually going to prove something using the coordinate plane. We want to prove that two triangles are congruent, and they're the tri triangles given by these coordinates. So what I'm going to do is draw those triangles, and we can't find angles on the coordinate plane, but we can find side lengths. So we're going to be showing that all sides are congruent and proving they're congruent by um, side, side, side. And then CPC, TC will show you that those angles are congruent. All right, don't get overwhelmed, but I drew the two triangles. So DEF is the pink triangle. The blue one is H or GHI. So I took each of the sides, used the distance formula. Here it is as a reminder. Plugged in my x1, x2, y1, y2, and these are the side lengths I got. And I did the same for GHI. So remember, you have three sides that you have to find. And if you notice, these two are the same length. These two are the same length. And these two are the same length. So I can say that the triangles are congruent by side, side, side. Since the triangles are congruent, these are corresponding angles. So those two angles are congruent by CP, CTC. And now it's your turn. So again, plot the two triangles. Prove the two triangles are congruent using the distance formula for all of them, for all three sides. And then when triangles are proven congruent, then you, or shown congruent, then you can use CP, CTC to prove those angles are congruent. All right, so that's it. Here's our summary. We looked at corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. We use that to show things are congruent once we know that the triangles are congruent. And as it says, it's a way to use congruent triangles to prove that corresponding parts are congruent, but you have to show that the triangles are congruent first. And remember, we can use the distance formula to prove triangles are congruent. We're going to use it to show that all the sides are congruent. So write down your questions and we'll see you next time.